Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs and in this video we are doing a sew along for the Simplicity Early Spring Pattern, Simplicity 9467. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Now, I want to say a few things before we get on over to the sew along. Um, this pattern has extended cuffs. So the cuffs is almost up to your elbow. So if you don't like that look, you can fold them in half and then get a smaller cuff. Number two, this is also part of the 150 likes that I got on the Simplicity Early Spring Pattern Haul that I did, which I will go ahead and link above so you could see that video if you have not done so already. So because I received 150 likes on that video, that's why I am doing a sew along for one of the patterns that was featured in that video. And a lot of you wanted me to do Simplicity 9467. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this sew along. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the sew along for the next pattern, which will be Simplicity 9467, which is Simplicity's early spring pattern. So I am doing view C, the length of view C, but I'm only taking the collar from view B. So this is view C with the collar of view B. Now, let's go ahead and get into the tools and supplies that you need in order to construct this blouse. So, of course, you're going to need your marking tools, which is a pencil and a um, water-soluble ink pen. You will need a marker if you are highlighting your pattern. You will need your seam gauge to mark on your fabric. You will need a seam ripper just in case you make a mistake and need to rip out any seams any type of scissors. I have one for paper, one for fabric. I never mix the two there. You will need your um, clippers at the sewing machine if you use those. Also, you, I use rotary cutters, so you can do rotary cutters, one for paper, one for fabric. Never mix the two there. You will also need some pens to hold all of your pieces together. And the only notions that you will need is about 15 half inch buttons. And that's all the supplies that you need in order to construct this blouse. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the pattern instructions itself. So the pattern pieces that you will need for, in order to construct the view that I'm doing, view C, with the collar of view B, you need pattern piece one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then 12 and 13. And pattern piece number nine as well. Now, the reason why I have the instructions out is because there are so many errors in the pieces that you need in order to construct this blouse. So pattern piece number three, which is your front and pattern piece number four, it says that it's just for view A and B. However, it doesn't tell you what pattern is for C and D. So there's only front pattern pieces, which is three and four. You need pattern piece number three and pattern piece number four for any of the views that you are doing. So you might wanna write that on your pattern, if you have this pattern, that C and D is for both pattern piece number three and pattern piece number four. Another thing that has, there's an issue is pattern piece number nine. It just says S9467, 10 miss, right? However, this is a buttonhole guide. So make that correction on your pattern instructions that pattern piece number nine is a buttonhole, all right? Now, outside of that, make sure you read what's the seam allowance is, which is 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Also, take a look at the cutting layout, which I will not go over because by now you should know how to cut out your fabric for whatever view that you're doing. Let's go ahead and take a look on the inside. Make sure that you cut out your interfacing as well. I am only interfacing pattern piece number five and 13, which will be my collar and my cuffs. Also, 
This um, blouse is very oversized. So I highly suggest for you to do a muslin and the only pattern pieces that you will need in order to do that muslin is your yoke front, which is pattern piece number one, your yoke back, pattern piece number two, the front and the back, which is three and four. Those the and one sleeve if you wanna test out the sleeves, but I did not do that. I just cut out pattern piece one, two, three, and four and used the basting stitch just to test the fit and it worked out perfectly. And the only reason why I did that is because measuring the pieces, it made it seem like it was extra huge. Now this pattern does run pretty big, so I want to let you know that you may want to do a muslin of the pattern pieces I just stated and then determine if you're going to take any in or out, but whatever you take in, make note of that on your pattern pieces. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the instructions of how we will construct this, and then we could go ahead and get into the pattern piece since that we will use. All right, so for the sewing directions, make sure you make a note of your glossary, what everything means. If you have not sewn along with me before, you wanna make note of these instructions of what E-stitch interfacing understitch means. Also, we will do some stay stitching, which I will not show that on the machine. You should know how to do stay stitching by now because this is not a complete beginner pattern. However, you should know how to do that by now. We will do some gathering in step number six, gathering the back. Um, we will do the placket area on pattern piece, on, I'm sorry, on step number seven, eight, and nine, we will go ahead and do the neck band and the collar. You guys know that I do my collar and neck band differently. So these instructions right here on view, um, I'm sorry, step number 10 through 14 will be different than what the instructions state. So stay tuned for that. And then we will install our sleeves on step number 24 through 28, and then finish off with our hem as well in our cuffs, okay? And add our buttonholes. Those are all the steps that we will do to construct this, but I will walk you through the steps, okay? So just go ahead and move your instructions out of the way, and let's get into the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct your blouse. All right, so let's talk about the pattern pieces you will need in order to construct this blouse. I have mine's nicely folded, but you will need pattern piece number 12, which is your sleeve. You need to cut two of fabric. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number 13, which is your cuff. You need to cut four of fabric and interface two. The next pattern piece is pattern piece number five. You need to cut this piece with the right side of the fabric, I'm sorry, right side of your pattern piece down and you're gonna cut around. You need to cut this on the fold and you're going to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Next one is pattern piece number six, which is your collar. You need to cut two of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. So make sure you cut pattern piece number six on the fold. Next pattern piece is pattern piece number four, which is the back. You need to cut this with the wrong side of your pattern up, right side of the pattern facing down on your fabric, and you need to cut this on the fold and you're just cutting one on fold of fabric. Next one is pattern piece number one, which is your yoke front. You need to cut two of fabric. Next one is pattern piece number two. You need to cut this with the wrong side of your pattern up, right side of your pattern facing down on the fabric. You need to cut one unfold of fabric. And the last pattern piece you will be cutting is pattern piece number three, which is your front. You need to cut two of fabric. Now the other piece that you will have is pattern piece number nine. This is your button, button hole guide. Now on the instructions that I just stated, you're not gonna cut this out of fabric. You're gonna use this when it's time to do your buttonholes and attach buttons. Now, I am between which buttons I want to use. I have kind of like some shanks and I also have some regular buttons. So I'm just deciding on which one I wanna use. I'm thinking I wanna use this for my fabric, but I'm unsure. These I will have to hand sew and then these I could do on the machine. So I'm just debating on which one I wanna use. I think I'm gonna use this one, but you just have to stay tuned to see which one I use. All right, so now that I talked about the 
pattern pieces you need in order to construct this blouse. Let's go ahead and get right on into the sewing. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is grab pattern piece number one and pattern piece number two, which is your yoke front and your yoke back. And what you're going to do is stay stitch the neck edge. So you're going to stay stitch from the top all the way over. Now, one thing before you stay stitch, make sure you add your interfacing. So I'm gonna make sure that I add my interface before I do the stay stitch and I just have not added my interfacing yet. But you're going to interface from the center front edge all the way over to where this dot is. So you should have a dot right here. You're going to, this part right here should be interfacing, okay? And make sure you do the same thing to your uh, front piece as well, which is pattern piece number three. Make sure you do the same thing and interface that as well. So what you're going to do is from the top all the way to the front, you're going to in. I'm sorry, you're going to stay stitch using a half an inch seam allowance. You're gonna do that for both the front as well as your back. Now for the back, you're going to start at the center back and then sew to one, one end and then flip it over and sew to the other end. So go ahead and do your stay stitching now. All right, so now that I have done my stay stitching on pattern piece number one, which is my yoke front, and pattern piece number two, which is my yoke back, what you want to do is with right sides together, you want to attach at the shoulder seams and the side seams. So you want to attach this one, making sure that your center front is to the front, and you want to attach right sides together, attach at your shoulder seams and the side seams. So go ahead and pin your shoulder seams and your side seams now. All right, so now that I have my shoulders and my sides pinned, using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and sew across both shoulder seams as well as the side seams. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have finished sewing the shoulder seams and the side seam, I went ahead and finished off my shoulder seams and my side seam. So go ahead and put the yoke pieces, the front and back yoke, to the side and you want to grab up your front and back, which is pattern piece number three and four. So pattern piece number four, which is this one right here, you should have cut it with the wrong side of the pattern piece down and the, um, the wrong side up, the right side of the pattern piece down. And what you're going to do is we're going to attach the front to the back at the uh, side seam and also gather at the top. So you want to open it up and then after you open up your pattern piece number four, now this is the back, so don't forget that this is the back. You want to add pattern piece number three, which you should have interfaced this portion right here of the front, which is two inches from the center front to that um, interfacing line is two inches in, uh, wide, and then the length of how it, whatever, view that you're doing for your top, it's that inches wide. All right, so what I'm going, going to do is with right sides together, I'm going to attach pattern piece number three to pattern piece number four at the side seams, okay? So make sure you are, you have your front piece with that round edge at the top, okay? You do not want to attach the top to the bottom. That would not be good, okay? So what you're going to do is with right sides together, we're going to go ahead and pin at the side seam. So go ahead and pin your side seam, both side seams now, and then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and then make your gathering stitches at the top of your top. So what I'm going to do for my gathering stitches after I sew, the side seam is I'm going to start at the center front and I'm going to gather all the way to the side seam. Now, before you gather, make sure you finish off your seam allowance. Then gather using the longest basting stitch that you have on your machine. I'm going to do my first gather 
at a half an inch seam allowance and then my second gather at three eighths of an inch seam allowance, then I would not be picking it out by sewing five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to gather from the center front to the side seam and then from the side seam, there is a notch in the back to that notch and then uh, all the way around. So go ahead and sew your side seam, finish them off and make your gathers now. All right, so now that I went ahead and I finished, I sewn right sides together, I sewed the side seams, the front to the back at the side seams, finished it off and pressed my seam towards the back, which is pattern piece number four on both of the sides. And then I gathered. Now I wanna tell you how I gathered. So there is a notch at the very top right here. And I gathered from that notch over to the side seam. Then I gathered from the side seam to the middle notches, and then from the middle notch to the other side seam. And then uh, uh, the, on the other side, I did from the side seam to that notch. Now what I'm going to do is pull up my gathers and then we're going to attach the yoke front, the top of the yoke to the bottom front. Okay, I'm gonna show you how that goes. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and pull up your gathers now. All right, so now that I have my gathering done at the very top of my front and back, go ahead and grab your yoke piece and you're just wanting to look at the bottom portion of it, okay? So now the first thing you wanna do is you want to attach your front to your uh, front to your front bottom. So basically your yoke front to your front. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is to attach at your side seams. You want to make sure your side seams are matching up first. So attach the side seams on both sides. So attach that side seam and then you're going to attach this side seam. This will give you a basis of how much gathers you either need to pull up or take out. Now I'm going to attach my front. And what I'm going to do is just pen the front. Make sure your notch is uh, matching up as well. So you have a notch right here, make sure that match up and pin there. And then what you want to do is loosen up the gathers you just did to make sure that it fits onto the yoke front nicely to where it's not bunching up, you could sew it with no problem, all of that good stuff. So make sure that you have a good fit on the bottom where you have gathered in your yoke. So go ahead and do that now for both of your front pieces. All right, so now that I have both of the sides done, now you want to do the same thing to your back. However, you have notches in the back, so you want to line up your notches first. So you want to pin at your notch before you fix your gathering. And then that's one notch, and then you're going to pin at the other notch. So just make sure you find the other notch, which my other notch is right here. So I'm going to pin that other notch from the yoke back to the back, all right? So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and basically smooth out my gathers and make sure that my yoke back fit onto my back. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have it pinned at the notch, you're just going to basically fit this back onto this portion right here, this yoke back onto the back portion. And then using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to start at one uh, front and you're going to sew all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. So go ahead and pin and do all of that now. All right, so now that I have my um, back and front bottom, the bottom, 
or you could just call it the front and the back attached to my yoke front and back. So it's looking really good. So I went ahead and finished my um, seam allowance off with my serger and then pressed the seam allowance up towards the yoke. Now, what I did after that is, this is a personal preference, you do not have to do this, but since I pressed it up towards the yoke, I went ahead and top stitch at a fourth of an inch seam allowance just to keep it pressed up and don't have to worry about it flopping and all that good stuff. So I went ahead and top stitch all the way around um, to keep that pressed up. All right, so now that I did that, you're going to move your top, this is what it's looking like, like just to show you you're going to move your top out of the way and grab your neck band and your collar now if you're doing view b like i am with the collar it does not tell you well if you're doing view c with the collar of view b you're going to do it exactly like i am doing it if you want the collar if you do not want the collar you're just going to follow the directions, I think it's step number 13, where you just attach your neck band. So now what I'm going to do is, first thing you want to do is attach your collar. We'll come back to the neck band, but we're going to attach our collar with right sides together. Now make sure that one of your collars are interfaced. So what you're going to do is open it out, And then you're going to pin with right sides together, pin at your side seam and along the bottom, okay? So go ahead and pin your side seam and your bottom now. All right, so now that I have my collar um, pinned, I'm gonna move my neck band out the way, but now this is the collar. So now that I have my collar pinned using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, what I'm going to do is start on this side, back stitch at the beginning, come all the way down and pivot when you're 5 eighths of an inch. You're just gonna lift your presser foot up and then sew around the bottom. When you get to this side, side edge, you're gonna lift your presser foot up with the needle down and then go ahead and pivot and finish it off. You're going to be back stitching at the beginning and at the end. And then go ahead and do that now and trim your seam allowance down. So now that I have the collar done, I went ahead and basted it along the top using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance just to keep it closed. Now this is the portion where it will be a little different than what's in the instructions, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is grab pattern piece number five, which are your neck band piece. So grab the one with the interfacing. You wanna put that down on the table with the right side facing up. The next thing you want to do is you have, now please make note of what side is your interface side and what side is your non-interface side, okay? So the side with your interface side you want up and the side that is not interface you want down onto your interface neck band. So if you already went ahead and basted that across, look inside and see which side. So my interface side, if you could see that, is on this side right here. So I'm going to put it down right on top of that, just like that. Make sure you match up your dots as well. Now we're not gonna pin yet because we still have one more thing left to do. Now the first thing you wanna do is on the neck band, which is actually your non-interface neck band that is used as facing, okay? What you wanna do is go ahead and create a basting stitch at the very bottom. 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Press up that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to trim it down to a fourth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim mine down now. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my neck band trimmed down, you're going to place this neck band right on top of the collar and the interface neck band. Basically what you're doing is sandwiching your collar in between the neck bands, okay? Now what you're going to do is make sure everything is matched up. So you wanna make sure that you are matching your collar sections 
as well as your neck band se sections. So basically what you wanna do is make sure that your collars are matched up and you, you have a dot right here, which is your buttonhole, and then you have a dot right here. Let me bring this closer so you can see it. So you have your two dots right here, which is for your buttonhole, and then you have this dot where your collar should stop, okay? So just make sure you are matching up the right sections, okay? So I'm gonna bring my collar back just a little bit to make sure it's matching up with this dot right here. I'm hoping you can see that, all right? And then you want to pin all of it together. You also want to make sure you match up the two notches that you have in the back. So make sure you bring your collar up and match up the notches in the back as well. And make sure that you are pinning through all layers. So go ahead and pin your neck band onto your collar now. All right, so now that I have my neck band pinned onto my collar, so what you're going to do is right at this dot that you right that you have right here, you're gonna start right there at the dot. Do not start right here, you're gonna start at the dot. And what you're going to do is sew using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So actually I'm gonna start at the bottom because it's gonna create a nice lovely um, line to press up. So you're gonna start right here, come, come to the dot, and then you're gonna pivot all the way around and sew all the way through. So you're gonna back stitch at the beginning, sew five eighths of an inch seam allowance, come all the way around. I would go very, very slow so you have a nice clean finish. So start right here at the uh, beginning, back stitch at the beginning, sew all the way around, making sure you work slowly around the curves, come all the way around this other cover curve right here, and then come all the way to the end and back stitch at the end using a regular length stitch and 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my neck band and collar piece done, do not forget to press your seam allowance towards the neck, towards the neck band that is interfaced, okay? So don't forget to do that. I'll do mine here shortly, but move this out of the way and grab your top. And what you want to do on this top is you want to bring your facing portion in. So basically what you're going to do, I make clips at the top of mine, so you probably can't see it, but you want to uh, fold in to that first dot. So you have a dot right here. Let me show you. There's a dot right there. You want to bring it into that dot and you want to press, okay? And then after you press it, you're gonna bring it into that line that you should have created, which I just made clips in mine. You're gonna bring it to that line and press again and base the top portion and then base along the inside fold within five inches of the bottom. So make sure you mark up your five inches and that's where you're going to stop. So I'm gonna show you what that looked like. So go ahead and do that now and I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so now that I went ahead and pressed my, um, I guess you could call it the placket area to the inside, basted it and made sure that I kept five inches, you know, stopped five inches from the bottom. The next thing I did, I kind of did this off camera uh, and then realized I was not recording. So I'm just gonna tell you what I did. I went ahead and attached the lower part of the neck band that's interfaced to the upper portion of the blouse, okay? So it should look like this. I just have it all pinned. So make sure you pin, making sure you pin at your notches and make sure that the dots match up to the finished edge so you get a clean finish, okay? Now that I have that, what I'm going to do is start at one side using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and then also back stitch at the end. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we have our 
neck band attached to our blouse and it this is the inside so it's looking really good clean and polished on the inside and then when you turn it to the outside it's clean and polished now what i did was i attached my machine um, with top stitching all the way at the bottom and then i went ahead and did the top as well if you guys have been following me you guys know that i do it all the way around so let me bring this up so you can see it right here okay so I did my stitching all the way around. So when I turn it down, it's going to look really, really nice, okay? Now that we have this done, you're gonna move your blouse out of the way and we're gonna start constructing our sleeve. Now, a couple of things I wanna say is before we do the sleeve, we could just completely finish this. Um, but I would say try it on, see how you like it um, and go from there now before i do my sleeves i'm going to go ahead and finish off the bottom and how you do that is make a stitching line all the way around and i believe the hem allowance is five eighths of an inch if it's an inch and a quarter make it an inch and a quarter i cannot remember because i do not have the pattern pieces right in front of me but i believe i'm going to go ahead and grab the pattern piece so the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch hem allowance. So on the bottom, create a five eighths of an inch seam line all the way around. Once you create that seam, seam line, you're going to press the hem up five eighths of an inch seam allowance like this. What you're gonna do to this facing piece is you're gonna turn it onto itself like this and you're going to stitch, just stitch across, which creates a Basically what it's gonna do is encase that to where you have a clean finish. So just make sure that you fold it onto itself like this, stitch across five eighths of an inch seam allowance, trim it down, and then press up your hem. Now I'm going to search the bottom edge of my hem to finish off. Go ahead and do that now, and then we'll go ahead and construct our sleeve in just a few. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and turned the facing over, stitched that across, created a basting stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, press that up. Now what I'm gonna do is trim this down and turn the facing to the inside. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to leave a little peak at the end right here. So just use the end of my scissors to cut that and then cut it across just to trim it down just a little bit, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is just turn it to the inside. So what I'm gonna do is just turn this to the inside. You could use your point turner to, po to poke out the corners so you have a nice clean finish like this. And then what you're going to do is, I already pressed mine up, but I'm just gonna pin right here so let me grab my pins and I'm going to pin right here and then on the right side I'm going to stitch the hem in place. So I'm going to clip all this loose thread and what I'm going to do is on the right side I'm going to stitch my hem in place. So I'm just going to sew on the right side making sure I catch this hem in place so go ahead and stitch your hem in place now all right so now that i have my hem stitched in place it's looking really good it's finished now before we do the sleeves i'm going to do my buttonholes and um, turn my basting stitch into a regular length stitch okay so I'm gonna do my sleeves last and I'm pretty sure you could do your sleeves and your cuffs, but I'm gonna walk you through one sleeve and one cuff. You'll be able to do the other side yourself. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and work on the front portion of my blouse, okay? So what I'm gonna going to do is right where you have that basting stitch at, you're going to sew right on top of that basting stitch using a regular length stitch. Go ahead and um, use a regular length stitch and where that basting stitch is, so all the way down the front, and then remove the basting stitch. You're going to do that on both sides. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and 
finished off my placket area with a regular lunch stitch and removed my bank basting stitch. So you probably can't see this, but I'm going to try to get it as good as I possibly can to the camera. So I did that on both sides. Now what you want to do is on the right side of your um, blouse. So I already have mine and I'm going to show you this. I know you're saying like, when are you going to do the sleeves? But guess what? I'm going to do the sleeves. I'm doing the sleeves last. Um, because you could do all of this stuff right here now and not worry about the sleeves because once you put the sleeves on, you are completely done, okay? So I'm going to show you this in the instructions. Like I said, when I'm going through the tutorial, I don't like to run back and forth to the sewing machine, so I do many steps all at once, all right? So we are on step number... 36, 37. Now I'm going to add my button, uh, my buttonholes later. I'm just going to mark it and I'm going to add my buttons at a later time too. After I mark my buttonholes and make my buttons after I do my, um, sleeves. Okay. So I'm going to make all my buttonholes all at once. So on the buttons right after I do the sleeves, I'm just marking it now. All right. So First of all, I want to say, if you look right here on number 37, you'll see that the buttonholes is made on the right side of your blouse when wearing it. So make sure you make the buttonholes on the right side of your blouse instead of the left side, okay? So this is your right side when wearing it, okay? So make sure that you don't have your fabric to the left, to the right of you. So don't do it this way. If you have your yours this way and all the rest of the fabric uh, to the right of you, you have it on the wrong side. So make sure you have your front placket area right here and then all the rest of the fabric is to the left of you. Then you know you have the right side of your fabric. Now grab your marking, your disappearing marking tool, which is right here. And then you want to mark your buttonholes. Now, make sure you have tried your blouse on. And what I normally do is mark out where I want my buttonholes to be right at the bust area, simply because most of the time for, the, for some of us who, uh, who are bigger in the chest area, if you do not mark that hole right at your bust area, then it seems to have like that gaping right there um, and show your bra. So you want to mark that area, which is normally right about here. Now I already marked it on mine, on uh, the underside of mine, but you may want to mark that as well. So just go all the way down, marking the rest of your buttonholes. Now that I have my buttonholes marked, I could go ahead and remove my pins, darken up any of the marks that I need, and I'll just put that to the side and make my buttonholes once I finish the sleeves. So now that you have done that, go ahead and grab your sleeves and your cuffs. All right, so go ahead and grab pattern piece number 12 and 13, which is your cuffs. So on your cuffs, you should have cut four cuffs right here for fabric and you should have interfaced too. So I have two of them interface. These two right here are interface and then these two are not interface. All right. So go ahead and move your cuffs out of the way. We'll work on that here shortly. Now, this is your sleeves. You should have cut two. So what I did so far off camera is I went ahead and gathered the top portion of my I'm going to move this one out the way. So I went ahead and gathered the top portion of my sleeve cap. Then you have two dots right here. Let me bring it up so you can see it. You have two dots right there. You need to reinforce, meaning that you're going to go um, about an inch on both sides of these two dots and make sure you stitch across those dots. Okay. After you, you do that, Go ahead and grab your scissors and you're going to cut to your dot, but not cut through your dot. So I'm just going to cut to the dot like that on all on both sleeves. So I'm going to do it for my other one as well. Move that one out the way. I'm going to show you one more time how I'm going to do that. 
So I have two dots right here and I'm just going to clip to the dots, but not through the dots. All right. Now, after I do that, what I'm going to do is turn it with the wrong side up and I'm just going to press it in once and then press it up again over that stitching line and stitch it in place. So go ahead and do that for both of your um, sleeves. Now, once you do that, you're going to make gathering stitches. You're going to do that on the bottom portion of your sleeve. So make a gathering stitch from this dot over and then this dot over to the opposite edge once you uh, stitch this in place. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the bottom portion of my, um, where I did that cut out, I have it pressed up in it and stitched in place. I also made my gathering stitches. So you're going to pull up your gathers um, it doesn't matter how much you pull up because you're going to fit this onto your cuff. So just pull up a little bit. So I'm just gonna pull up a little bit. All right, so now that I have the gathers pulled up, what I'm gonna do is with the right sides together, I'm going to sew the underarm seam. So basically pin at that notch, top and bottom, and the length of the sleeves. And starting at the beginning, you're going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end and then finish off your seam allowance. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my underarm seam sewn together, I finished off my seam allowance. I'm going to turn it right side out. And we're going to start working on our cuffs. Now, if you haven't, you can pull up gathers, but like I said, we're going to work on our cuffs. So you may have to pull up or let some out. So you have the two dots right here. And what you're gonna do is you're going to grab your cuffs. Now I did one cuff just to show you that you wanna make sure that you are using the right cuff on your seams. Reason being is because there is a notch right here and you need to make sure that that notch right here on your cuff match up. So I'm going to pin at the notch And then you want to see if it match up. Now mine match up at that seam, so I'm going to pin all the way around. But I'm gonna show you how you sew your cuffs before doing all of that. So let's back up a second, and I'm gonna put that sleeve off to the side and grab my cuff. cuff. All right, so I already pinned mine for this cuff, just to show you. And what you're going to do is the cuff facing, that's the one that does not have the inner facing on it. You're going to press up on the top portion, five eighths of an inch seam allowance, press it, and then trim it down three eighths of an inch seam allowance to about a fourth of an inch, okay? So I trimmed it down. After I did that, did that I went ahead and pinned the side. So you're going to sew the side and the bottom using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're gonna start at the top, back stitch at the beginning, sew down one side, pivot, come across five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then back up and back stitch at the end. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my cuff sewn, you're gonna trim down the sides and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim down the bottom and the sides now. Then I'm going to clip at the corners, but do not clip your stitching. All right, and after I do that, I'm gonna use my point turner and turn it right side out. So I'm going to turn this right side out. And I'm going to grab my point turner to make sure that my corners are poked out and then I'm going to go to my sewing machine, not my sewing machine, but my ironing board and give it a good press, all right? So after you poke your corners out, go ahead and give your cuff a good press now. All right, so now that I pressed my cuffs out, this is what it's looking like. Now you can move this off to the side and, well, I'm gonna move that one off to the side and finish up with the one that I started working on. So now that I have so what you're going to do 
is go ahead and attach the cuff, making sure that your notches meet up. If your notches do not meet up, meet up, you have the wrong sleeve. So change out the sleeves, all right? So I'm going to make sure that notch meet up, and then I'm going to make sure that this dot right here, that you see right there, you can barely see it, it meets up with this dot right here on the sleeves. And then I'm going to pin there as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my gathering stitches is pulled up enough, but not too tight to where my cuff could fit onto my sleeve. And then I'm going to pin all the way around adjusting my gather. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my cuff pinned onto my sleeves using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're gonna start at one of the dots and sew all the way around back stitching at the beginning and at the end. Go ahead and do that for both of your sleeves now. All right, so now that I have my cuff attached, what I'm going to do is go ahead and trim the seam allowance down in order to attach the cuff onto the sleeve, okay? So go ahead and trim your seam allowance down now. All right, so now that I have my seam allowance trimmed down, what you want to do is press the seam allowance up towards your uh, interface portion of your cuff, okay? And then you're going to take the finished edge and attach it onto the sleeve, okay? So basically you're gonna press it up like this, and then you're gonna take this part and go just a little over that seam allowance, all the way around, and then stitch it in place like you did for your collar, okay? So go ahead and do that now. And once you do that, all you're going to do is gather your sleeve cap and attach it to your um, sleeve. So I'm just gonna show you just quickly how you will attach it. However, you will have to sew it together yourself, okay? So basically this is my top, this is my sleeve. I am going to pull up some gathers on that sleeve cap. So just make sure you pull up a little bit of gathers. So I'm gonna do that right here. All right, so now that I pretty much pulled up a little bit of gather, I'll adjust it while I put it on. One thing you wanna do is make sure you are using the correct sleeve. So with right sides together, you know that the portion that has two, um, you have one that's a single notch and one that's a double notch. The double notch represents the back of your sleeve. So this, the back of your top and your sleeve. So this sleeve goes on to this um, portion of my arm's eye or arm hole. So I'm gonna make sure that my seam allowance is facing the back, which is where the two notches are. Make sure that that is facing the back. Make sure that on your blouse, the seam allowance is also facing the back. You're going to pin at your underarm seam. Pin at the double notches right here. And then you're going to pin at your single notch in the front of your blouse, okay? Now after I make those um, pins, pin right there, what I do is flip my blouse inside out. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna move out the pin, pin, move the pins over, flip it like this so I could really look at it better. Now I made a little dot at the very top of my um, sleeve and that dot is just to symbolize the middle of my, um, my the top portion of my shoulder seam. So you wanna match that up and then adjust your gather so you could pin all the way around your sleeve. So go ahead and do that now. All 
All right, so now that I have the sleeve pinned into the arm's eye area, I'm gonna start at the underarm seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, and then sew all the way around and back stitch at the end. After you do that, you're going to finish off your seam allowance, and once you do that, you are all done with your blouse. Just make sure you do the exact same thing to the other sleeve and the armhole as well. Once you do that, you're completely done with your blouse. So there you have it. That is the complete sew along for Simplicity 9467. If you do not have this pattern, go over to Joann's and get this pattern when the next Simplicity sale is going on. Of course, stay locked to the channel. You will know because I tend to post all the pattern sales that I see. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep sewing.